Thank you very much. So, um, so I'm going to continue this uh, series of talks, and today uh, it will be a little bit different. So I want to talk about um, how this knot contact homology is related to some bits of sort of physics, and so I, I will have to talk a little bit about um, a little bit about physics, and that will be kind of sketchy and. Uh, imprecise and so on, so maybe not kind of in the, in the spirit of, of uh, Helmut's polyfolds, but, but anyway, I hope it will be interesting and it will be kind of brief. But, but the first thing I, I want to continue from last time, so remember that uh, we did do one calculation. So, so if you took the unknot, so there was just the unknot, and then, then we actually looked at uh, its co-normal, um, lambda u sitting inside uh, this unit, co unit cotangent bundle of R3, which we observed was just equal to one jet space of S2. And this was somehow the only calculation we really carried out. But, but there we could draw, if you remember, we could draw the front. Uh, and there was some kind of torus. Oops, not so great picture, but it, it, it looked like that. And the, there was somehow these four disks on it, which, so this is just recollection, so of course it's understandable to anybody who didn't listen last time, but we could find these four holomorphic, curve, holomorphic disks using flow trees, and uh, there were two generators for this, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, does I have to, <laughs> if she's not here, then it's fine. So two generators, C of degree one and E, of degree two, and uh, and the, and the algebra was just <coughs> the following: that dE was equal zero, and dC was equal to one minus e to the x minus e to the p plus q e to the x e to the p. So where where the remember the coefficient ring was somehow this e to the x e to the p and q, which was encoding the um, this x is the longitude on the, on the conormal torus, p is the meridian, and q is the class of the S2. So this is kind of relative homology class. Okay, so, so now uh, we first looked at um, the special case where we, we so, so and, then, and that was also the augmentation polynomial. So the augmentation polynomial of this u was just equal to this expression. Uh, Like that, and now let's put q equals one here. So, uh, and then the augmentation. If we restrict this augmentation polynomial to q equals one, uh, then what we get is one minus e to the x minus e to the p plus e to the x e to the p, which is equal to one minus e to the x one minus e to the p. And this actually is no accident. So, so it turns out that this two factors uh, divides the augmentation polynomial of any knot. So I want to kind of try to, to show that. Uh, and it gives you this somehow using, uh, using some standard property of this SFT package. This is always when you specialize q equals 1 for, for the other knots. Yeah, right, exactly, yes. So, 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 so I'm sorry, so I should state probably like theorem, so theorem. Uh, uh, so for any k, uh, the augmentation polynomial of k, specialized at q equals 1, is divisible by this 1 minus e to the x, 1 minus e to the p. So why is that? So, so in fact, uh, this comes from, uh, so, so the proof comes from cobordism maps in, in this Legendrian uh, I'll draw the picture right here. So, so much like we defined the differential in this uh, uh, contact homology DGA, you can also define a chain map. So in this case, we have lambda k sitting inside this u star R3. And, <clears throat> and it bounds. It's the ideal boundary of the, say, full co-normal. Uh, where the, the 
cone normal sits inside T star, T star R3. And this guy is exact, and that's somehow important for this argument. And then this LK actually induces a chain map, epsilon, from the algebra uh, of, of the unknot, or of the not, maybe, I'll, maybe this was the notation, into <coughs> integers. Uh, that counts where uh, where and I'm drawing the picture. So if I want to count epsilon of a rave chord A, so this is equal to a count of moduli spaces, which I schematically draw like this. So I have a positive puncture at the rave chord A, and then the disk goes down, and the boundary lands on L K, right? So. <coughs> So now, what I would want to do is I want to check that this is a chain map. And the, the chain map comes from this SFT compactness result, namely, and, and gluing, but uh, why, why is it chain map? So, uh, so what, what you need to do, so this, this I should say I count rigid. So I, I write this, so it's maybe bad for, for later. But this is zero, this maybe I write d equals zero. So this dimension is equal to zero, so I count rigid such planes. But now if you think about, instead looking at the moduli space of d equals one such thing, so then its boundary, so the boundary of this thing, is exactly two level buildings, which on the top has this d equals one disk, and on the bottom, the second level is d equals zero disks like that. And now that means indeed that this is a chain map, right? Because the, the boundary of this one-dimensional moduli space now consists of such things, and they, they're exactly the uh, they're exactly the, uh, the things that contribute to this kind of phi composed with the D. It's there for zero, and this is a chain map. So this is this is an augmentation. And what does it do on the on the on the homology variables? Well, on the homology variables. So the only homology variables surviving is p and x. And on the homology variables, it's just the inclusion map. So, so this kills, so this maps e to the x, uh, sorry, e to the p, the meridian, is mapped to 1, right? And e to the x, you can, you can use the homology variable remaining in this lambda k and map, map into kind of e to the x, right? So, 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 so this shows that this factor is in the augmentation polynomial. And so we would like to also see that the other factor is in the augmentation. Yes? Can you see that again? Like, can you understand? You repeat that there's a reason why, why this factor divides the augmentation polynomial. Yeah, so, so this map, if you want to, so how, how do you count these disks, right? So, so remember you had some kind of capping here. So you count them uh, by counting their, their, how much they wrap around the kind of generator of, the, this guy is just S1 times R2, right? And, and the R2 or D2 fills the P variable, right? So the, the map does not see if this disk, uh, the, 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 it kills the P variable, right? It's a somehow just inclusion map on homology from torus to the solid torus is identity on A, it takes X to X and P to zero. And that's what this map does as well, right? So, so if that means that if I, if I put e to the p equals 1, and I define my chain map like this, I have a chain map. So therefore, e to the p equals 1 is in the augmentation uh, variety, and this factor sits in the polynomial. Okay? Right, so, so we'd like to understand why this, this thing is here. And it's there for a similar reason, because there is another, there is another uh, feeling that fills out uh, x, and let, let's try, there are many ways to see this, but one way is, uh, of seeing it is, um, uh, uh -huh. maybe here it's better to use <coughs> S3 than R3, so I haven't this yet, but let, let me anyway use S3 rather than R3. So, so here is S3 and here is R0. And then I have the co-normal kind of going out like this how to draw it, but you see, if the co-normal intersects the, the zero, zero section along the knot, then I can, 
there, I, so basically Lagrangians looks like that, and I, I can now surger them so that I get this thing. And, and what do I do? So what, what I do is I, I take a zero section and I join the conormal, and the topology of what I get is actually the not complement, right? So I have another filling, which is slightly more complicated. It kind of goes down and then spreads over S, S3, so, but, but that's the topology. So I, I can sort of do... It is exact, yeah. So, or if you if you want to see that from the beginning, you can take a function, Morse function that sort of explodes just along the knot, right? And take the graph of that. So, so, so I have another feeling, let's say M K, which topologically is just S three minus the knot, and 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 that, if I just care about it, it's it's a kind of of course interesting topology here. But if I care about the homology, it's not so interesting. It exactly kills the the longitude and the, keeps the, the um, meridian. So, so therefore, I, I also have this factor explained by counting disks on this other Lagrangian. So, so these two exact Lagrangians, they somehow give me these factors, and that's that's a kind of proof of this theorem. I guess I want to pay attention. What was the first Lagrangian? The first was just the cone normal itself, Lagrangian cone normal itself, going down to the zero section. This one going down to zero section. So now, and, and as you see, th this works great for this Q equals one. And remember that Q was somehow, Q was related, is the E to the T, where T is the class of this S2. So here we feel the S2, and it's very hard to recover Q. And so, what, what, what now I want to explain is what, what's, what's with augmentation polynomial when Q is not equal to one, and how can we see it geometrically there? And that turns out to be related to a, a lot of physics, so I, I want to kind of give just a very brief description of this physics, so that otherwise it's somehow very hard to guess where things come from. So, um, and it's a sort of more like an overview advertisement or something. And, and it's, 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 it's a long story in physics, but, but anyway, the starting point for this story is, is chern simons theory. And that's a, <coughs> has been, from, from physical point of view, is you have a three manifold, and then you have a chern simons action, so say S of, of a UN connection, so <coughs> three manifold M. And then, and A, maybe I should say, U and connection. And then you take this this uh, action form. So, so this action form is somehow not quite gauge invariant, but it 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 uh, changes. It comes from some characteristic class in four dimensions, so it changes by multiples of four pi if you change the gauge. Um, thing and then and then in physics you would write down the path integral, uh, which is a function of the of the underlying manifold and since it's a path integral it's hard to understand so you integrate over all gauge equivalence classes of connections and you take this e to the i k over four pi where k is an integer called the level uh, of this uh, chern simons action. So this uh, object, from a mathematical point, does not make sense, but you can treat it uh, with, with Feynman perturbation theory and, and get something. In the, and, and basically, if you do that, you get an expansion in terms of, so maybe a yeah, expansion uh, in terms of, of k, which is this level, and and n, which is the uh, uh, which is the the uh, un, right? So okay, um, and then the starting point for, for, for our relation is actually Witten's old result from uh -huh. that uh, from 1992. Uh -huh. Path integral 
Yeah. Approximate it or? Right, you can expand it. Uh, uh, so the, the critical points of this action functional are the flat connections. So you can kind of expand it around the, these flat connections in some kind of fine, final expansion. And I, I'm not going to, this, this, the, there were a lot of, of things done about that, and I, I'm not going to talk about it. But, uh, right. Um, so, but, so, so, so Witten, in 92, uh, saw that this, this churn simus is actually related to, to uh, topological string theory, which is somehow, in our world, would be some gromer witten theory. So, so, <coughs> so, so what he says is that this churn simons uh, <coughs> churn simons uh, partition function is equal to a certain count. So it's really like, coming from topological strings here, but when it localizes, it's a, it's a gromer witten uh, invariant. And it's a, it's a little bit strange gromer witten invariant from our point of view, but it's the count of holomorphic curves living in the cotangent bundle of, on M, of M with boundary on the zero section, but, but you, have to take, you have to take N copies. So, so somehow you, you imagine it's like this. Your multi sections, but not perturbed, and the total weight is n. So you, you have exactly n copies of it lying on top of each other. And these such, if you, so, so the kind of, here would be string coupling constant. So this is the genus parameter that you use when you expand this, just like in SFT. So that's equal to, to this thing, this change of variable. So, so basically, what, what Witten is saying that is you're supposed to count holomorphic curves in T star M with the boundary on M. Now, being kind of well-educated symplectic geometry, you see that there are only constant such, such maps. But uh, if you look at formally the dimension, you see that this is a three-dimensional calab manifold, and the, the zero section has Maslow index zero. So formally, any such disk is rigid, so there should be a count. And, and, and uh, he invented something called string field theory to relate it directly to the churn simons count. So, but I, I think you know, this is, would be a kind of great, uh, great polyfold project to make sense out of this count, I think. But, um, no? So if I said k equal to zero, is, is, it, is it somehow clear that the right-hand side is not making sense? Mm. Which k? The k? The level of the churn simons uh, right, then the Trans yeah. Simons tries to just integrate over the whole space of connections, which Yes. Right. So then it should not really make sense, right? You're right. Right, so then the right hand side also shouldn't make sense. The right hand side. Yeah, makes sense, okay. Sorry. But I mean, are we excluding k for some reason? Uh, k equal to zero? Here? No. 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 I think not. It's supposed to say for k equal to zero. I mean, this quantity is the Humphrey polynomial. The right hand side. Yeah. It, we mean the one. So is there some is some specialization of it? Is there some idea of how I should get that just from the space from the function one on the space of connections? Uh, well what, what what's the typical thing about the space of connections? If I said k so equal to zero. Do so you want to compute somehow the volume of this space, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I don't know, how, so I, I didn't think about it much in these terms, but in terms of the kind of coefficients in the expansion. But of course, these coefficients should somehow mean something if you could go back. In, on that side, yes, but maybe perhaps not on this side, right? That's a, right? Yeah. No, I, I don't have a good answer, so I, I need to think. But this is, of course, a kind of... Uh, normalization of this volume. It, it will come out, as you're saying, this is not quite a Homfley polynomial yet, because we have no naught, right? But it will become, it will become, and we will normalize it. Is it when, the, when there's no naught in my three manifold? What is the churn simons at the coefficient, the constant coefficient? The partition function is not really meaningful. It's only like right. other expectation value divided by partition function, which is meaningful. 
The sure. Z of M is all along some sort of normalization constant. Sure, but and maybe, maybe, let's and, take and, n equal to 1, k equal to 0. I, 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 and so, like, it's totally okay for that normalization constant to be infinity, which it might be. Right. But still, when I evaluate at some other naught, and I divide that by this infinity, I get a meaningful answer. Sorry, that statement there. Should Let's be. save this for discussion. Anyway, I think this right. is a good discussion topic that will happen after lunch. Yeah. So, right. Let me kind of go one step further, and perhaps I can, perhaps this will answer your question. So, um, so then the next step in this story is somehow due to Oguri <coughs> Bafo, and they, they want to somehow, uh, the, the, so they, 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 they use what's called this conifold transition, and it's a way to relate uh, various string uh, theories, open, open and closed string theory. So it, it's also not understood, I would say, well understood mathematically, but there is a physical proof of this strange uh, correspondence. So here, this is a picture of T star, this picture of T star S3, with n copies of the zero section. And then, um, you know, T star S3 you can view as a quadric in C4, and, and, and you can pinch it to, to a cone, uh, where I basically pinch the zero section. But now you can resolve it the other way. So instead of, the, this indicates that I fill in the S2 by a disk topologically. Instead I can fill in the S3 by a disk topologically. So what I get topologically is somehow just S2 times R4, but it appears nicely if I use this algebraic geometry language as the, the O minus one bundle over CP1. And now, uh, what, <coughs> what, what the, this physics prediction says, or the f physics theorem is, that the, if I do the open, this Gromov Witten over here, then it's related to closed theory of closed curves here. So, um, I'm pulling out the blackboard, maybe here. And um, I have to require some relation between the areas here. And that, that the, so I, I take the area of this CP1. So that's a kind of Kähler parameter on, on this manifold is T. So that's finite and that's equal to the coupling constant, the string coupling constant times N. So I'm sort of letting N go to infinity and this going to zero in a controlled way so that it ends up at t. And then uh, the open gromov witten theory in this t star S3 with n copies on S3 should be equal to the closed gromov witten theory. So kind of gromov witten count in, let's call this x, this manifold, with this identification of parameters. So, uh, I thought the area of CP1 was called Q. I, I think Q is e to the t. Okay. So this is sort of logarithm of Q. Um, right. So now... Uh, is there an easy interpretation of N on the right-hand side? Or do I have to sum this over all N to extract it from the right? I think you have to sum over all N, so it's not... It's not a sum. It's a, a, you can specialize it out. Um, it's, it's, it's true yeah, it's true only if n goes to infinity. I think you have to do, yeah. But uh, so now maybe maybe we can recover this k k equals zero in some understandable manner here, because here so here so this so so okay so what can we say? So somehow this curve count can be done. So we're supposed to do the count curves here, and then you can do it. To, I don't know, Pandre Panda maybe can do it, and, 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 and this, and I, I'm sorry I don't answer your quiz, but we can also ex express these churn Simons, and they are in fact, I mean, so mathematically it's sort of check that they actually agree, right? So, so although there is no mathematical proof of, of the mechanism, in this case there is a 
mathematical check of the prediction of this thing. So are you saying, well, oh, so the check is between the two Gromov Witten things? No, no, I mean, the, the, this Gromov Witten I think we cannot quite do, but we can, we can expand. And I, I, I'm sorry, exactly as I couldn't answer your question, but there is a way to write that somebody else probably knows well, to write this partition function for S3 in some rather understandable manner. And, and there the answers check out. So what is the k equal to zero? Yeah, that's what I didn't answer, and I still cannot answer. So I'm sorry about that, but I, I will try to, to, to come up with a good answer. Yeah, so that, that, that was what I might suggest. Maybe you can, from here, recover what it would be. Because this is a curve count that we're more familiar with, right? What I would like to hear is some kind of completely fuzzy physics explanation of what I'm supposed to do with the space of U1 connections to get this thing. Yes. And I'm not going to give it to you now. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I can certainly try later. So, okay, so now, so we, we still we want to include knots in this story, and let us include knots. So, Sorry, yeah. quick question. So, you're saying that Q is e to the t, right? And no, again? Q okay. is e to the t. Yes. And before we specialize Q to 1, we're yes. just setting t to 0? Yes. And that's exactly the code. When the area of this is 0, then you're basically in the cotangent bump. So, basically here. So, you don't care about these things, and so no curves. Okay. So, uh, So, so there is a way to include knots in this story, and this is due to uh, I said, yeah, this is probably not a Guru Vafa. What I said is Gopa Kumar Vafa, but here it's a Guru Vafa. Uh, so, because I missed the knot. So, so, so in order to include knot, so, so, so what we do is we take this T star S three. And uh, remember, this is S3, so that, that's the n copies of this we have on, on each other. And then we add, we add the co-normal, uh, the co-normal of the knot. And now we want to count holomorphic curves in the same spirit, with several boundary, with, with they can look whatever they want. But there is just one copy of this LK and many copies here. And uh, and, and, and that can be shown on the Chern-Simon side to correspond to some insertion of, the, uh, <coughs> of something in the path integral. And basically what happens is that you're, you're supposed to take this path integral and you insert 1 minus e to the x, where e to the minus x, actually, which, which, so a, this is s1 times uh, r2 again, and this x basically corresponds indeed to U1 connection, so it's a monodromy around this generator of LK times the holonomy of our connection A along K. So this is a, it's supposed to take determinant and inverse. So this is somehow you, it's the same type of argument as Witten used from beginning, so I'm not going to give it. But what this then comes down to, and, and of course, so now this is why I don't answer your question primarily, because the, the thing that we're interested in now would divide out by all the, I mean, it's the expect, expectation value. So, so we're somehow, you know, this I4K and so on. So uh, here also, I'm a little bit sloppy. But, but anyway, so we're normalizing this by, by the S3 partition function. So, 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 and what comes out, in fact, here is uh, the colored Homfli polynomial. So you expand this as a determinant, and then you get symmetric uh, traces in symmetric representation. So, so after all, this is just the sum of, of the case, the Homfli polynomial in case symmetric, uh, maybe I put kh, it's not too many k's, e to the kx, or perhaps minus. But anyway, so what is this? This is something fairly possible to calculate. So Homfli polynomial uh, is a node polynomial when you just use this SU2, which is derived from some, so you can compute it from, for any node by some relation with coefficient like this. 
So polynomial for this guy, polynomial for that guy, plus polynomial for that guy is zero and some coefficients. So it's somehow iteratively computable. And the colored home flea is not quite computed from that, but you need to take also cables of the knot. But it's a fairly, fairly computable thing. So, uh, so now <coughs> what we see is we, we, we see this, this picture. And what we would like to do is we would like to apply the Gupa Kuma Wafa trick to just to go from the from the three from the cotent bundle of S3 to the to the resolved conifold instead. And we can certainly do it. And uh, and believing in the first strange statement, then it is clear. As mathematicians, why do we want to do that? As mathematicians, why do we want to do it? We want to do it because uh, this uh, there's somewhere where it's possible to count curves. So that's what I'm what I'm aiming for. So this is kind of quite nice manifold, right? You have it's, it's a compact, it's not a compact manifold, but it has a kind of a compact part and a positive infinity. So, so I, I want to have somewhere to kind of make a little bit sense of such, such things like this curve count. This is not too bad, right? Such counts. Uh, right. You're saying this is better because it doesn't force all the curves to be generated. Yes, yes, that's right. So, uh, that's right. So, so somehow this, this count we understand. I think this count we don't really understand as well. So, but what would happen is somehow exactly the same. So here is our provided that let's assume for a moment that the co-normal does not intersect S3. In fact, you can always shift it off a little bit. <coughs> Maybe I'll skip the explanation of that for now. And, and then imagine that we have these curves, somehow these holomorphic curves which used to look like this, they end on the, on the S3 zero section. So now, the, in the transition, what one should imagine is that all the holes of these curves, they kind of just shrink to, to points. And then, then it's clear that this is in T star S3. And if we believe this is clear what's going to happen in X. So in X, this boundary just stays. And then you get somehow this disk instead, right? So basically, what all this thing this dictionary is telling us is that this function should be equal to the gromer witten invariance of LK in X divided by all the closed curves in X. So, 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 so the Homfley polynomial encodes the holomorphic curves with boundary on LK sitting in X. Okay? Do you get some kind of mark point conditions on the... No, no mark point condition. That's just uh, for illustrational purposes. <laughs> the, boundary sh the boundary did shrink. It's, it's not really mark point. In fact, it's a, in the physics proof, there's a whole disk sitting there somehow. There's a, some, okay. But, but this, this is the picture. So now, um, <clears throat> in order to, to still cut some... To, uh, I'm, I'm skipping a little bit of this. Um, maybe I shouldn't. So, yeah, I'm saying two words. So, so, so let's call this function the somehow the wave function of k. And then, uh, one can. We can now try to take out the contributions from kind of small disks, indeed doing more or less what Katrin was asking for. So I'm going to do sort of GL1, uh, <coughs> GL1, churn Simons on, on this S1 times R2. And when you write down the, the uh, form of the action, you see that what you're doing, so here at, at infinity sits some sort of torus, and the connection has kind of periods p and x. And what you're doing is just, when you write up the path integral, you see that you're just doing quantum mechanics in variables p and x. So, <clears throat> so the action somehow uh, periods p and x. So, so therefore, uh, what you find when you quantize is that you should replace. 
Okay. Uh, so if, if you do, so you want to do, uh, let's say, GL1 or U1, GL1 churn Simon's theory on. Why, why do you want to do that? So <coughs> I, I said I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to count holomorphic curves. So you're going to play Witten's game in reverse now. You're going to go yeah. back from. Just one second. So, so I'm going to try to count curves from starting on LK and then kind of closing up. But there will be these small curves that just kind of constants in some sense that go from LK to itself. And I want to in some sense get rid of them. And then I play Witten's game in reverse because I know by Witten's argument that they would be churn simons theory here. And in words what happens is that the churn simons theory on this guy just looks like, path integral looks like quantum mechanics in variables x and p. And, and then we know what is quantization from some kind of, I don't know, whatever, high school. And, and so, the, so, 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 so that means that we should replace p by this g as d dx. Right? So p acting, so, and that's a kind of multiplying by these short little strings. p acting on the wave function should be <coughs> g as d dx. So somehow, psi k and this also psi k. Okay, and, and then, and then, also remembering maybe next year or some other year, I don't know, <coughs> so, so, so remember that you can then express the, the wave function, uh, this is called this short wave asymptotics, how you derive uh, so when, when you have this uh, Hamilton-Jacobi theory, how uh, you kind of could guess quantum mechanics, something like that. So, so, <coughs> so this is uh, somehow this is standard expansion. And then there comes a high, higher order kind of zero, <laughs> gs, gs squared, and so on. But remember what this was. So this was just, it's still up there. It was just a count of holomorphic curves. And, and gs was the genus parameter, so this is, this is here by our other interpretation, supposed to be just the disk potential. So I'm going to call it WK of X, right? So this is disk potential. Disk count. So we're counting rigid holomorphic disks on lambda, so we forget about all, all, all things with some topology in it and just count disks. And so this thing is predicting that we would have p is dwk dx. And in fact, looking at the Homfley <coughs> is somehow dequantizing the Homfley polynomial or, or its, its recursion relation. What you, what you find is that this, this thing should, so I'm, I'm really saying very briefly what, what, what uh, happens, but anyway, should give a local parameterization of an algebraic curve. And in other words, so, what, what, so, so if that's given by a polynomial, I will write that polynomial, maybe there are many a's, but maybe I'll anyway write a of k e to the x, e to the p, and I'm keeping this q, and I think of it as just as a variable. So th this is somehow the thing given by this. And so, and basically you can compute this A from, from the Homfley, colored Homfley, or a piece of it. And then what was observed, and this is the starting point of this talk really, and it's joint work by, by myself and Len Ng and, and Aganagik and Waffa. So, so what was observed was that this AK uh, is equal to the augmentation polynomial uh, in all examples. So, so I'm going to try to explain now why that is the case. So, so this is somehow uh, my next goal. So, so, so now we can in some sense forget about uh, all of this physics background, but, but still so what we are going to try to relate is now we're going to try to relate augmentations with Q not equal one, so more global things. Uh, 
with curve counts in X. So let me just kind of re redraw this picture. If what it's not you want then you have a drum that's one or two which is not given just written by one or two. Uh, right, if you have many components, yeah. yeah. So then you have a Lagrangian uh, given by actually many equations. It's still Lagrangian in, in, the, in, the, in the space, and uh, uh, basically the, this part of the story is more or less the same. Uh, it, it will again give various branches of this augmentation uh, variety, but again the, the, kind of the, the, the disk count, uh, the, it's, it's a little bit... Right. Um, so, 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 so basically, if, if you have many component link, you can also have other connected fillings of those components, right? So, so you cannot just look at the co-normals, but there have to be other Lagrangians which allow you to, to map mixed chords, so chords going from one to another down to, to something non-trivial as well. But basically, all, all these, they give a variety which should be the characteristic variety of the D module of the Homfli again. So uh, may, maybe I'll, I'll reach that to, to the less. But, but indeed, the, in, in, when you have many components, it's a higher dimensional variety that replaces this guy. So you have. Uh, One question so yeah. says to do, if you quantize it, uh, it kills you, yeah? I mean, if you quantize If I quantize the AK, uh -huh. uh, it kills the partition function. It Kills the, exactly, yes, 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 yes. And then, and that's if I kind of, if I'm fast enough to get there, I, w I would want to explain what that, that looks like f from the point of view of contact homology. So it's a more complete, it's like an SFT version of this contact homology. You should know this quantization of this guy. Okay, um, so, um, so le let, me, let me look at what we have. So we have this X. And inside this X sits LK, and I didn't explain how to shift it off the zero section, but it's, I, I'm, I'm just going to now say that it happened. So, so and, 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 and we have, so this maybe is LK, and inside here we have a count of disks, uh, which I will call W sub K of X. Uh, that's a count of disks. Uh, counts holomorphic disks. And again, we're in this calabi out setting, so they're all rigid uh, with boundary on, on, on uh, LK. And now the thing that we're setting out to prove, uh, so I, I would say theorem in quotes, but maybe I'm still saying theorem. Uh, so this is, this is so, okay, one can question how much of this is really proved in terms of perturbation theory and so on, but I'm, I'm not going to enter that discussion, so I'm calling it theorem anyway. So uh, the, the theorem is that if you take this P is equal to the W dx, uh, uh, is a branch of the augmentation variety. Okay. Uh, just to understand what this is saying. So, dwdx is a polynomial in x. Yeah, right. Then maybe I should write it. Uh, it's a kind of polynomial in e to the x or, or power series. So, it's some count count of curves in that wraps k times around x. So this is an equation of the variables x and p, and you're saying that uh, is a branch of it. That's a branch. That's lo locally a, a branch of the augmentation variety. Is WK of X a thing that's defined in mathematics today? I would say so, yeah. I mean, maybe somebody else would contest it. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it is, uh, I, 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 I will hint at how it would be defined, at least. <laughs> okay. But it's a borderline defined. Okay. <laughs> but, but not a yes. What, what about it makes it not defined? So you're supposed to count. Uh, 
is open gromma witten invariant. Uh, so, so it's some kind of framing contribution that's maybe not kind of completely sort. The, definitely, you need all this kind of abstract perturbation machinery. So, so I, uh, okay, I, I don't know. Maybe is it defined? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but note that what is defined, so defined or not, the augmentation variety is kind of very rigorously defined. So it's somehow transporting some things to infinity where you can actually deal with them perhaps easier. Okay. There's no Q in this? There is Q. Q uh, is here, sorry, yes. So, so we are keeping track of the full Oh, so this, this has a homology class, it wraps around here on the boundary, but also there is the, the CP1, the S2 inside, right? That's also carries homology. So I'm, I'm sorry, there's a Q here. Yes. I have a philosophical question. So like mm -hmm. the thing that's happening on the boundary, uh, augmentations about what about the like, fillings in the simplification. And here you're filling inside um, some, somewhere, else. In, somewhere else. Why is that okay? I'm going to explain that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's the kind of the case. So, so now uh, let's, let's first try, so how would we go about proving something like this? Well, we would just try head on with our old scheme. We, we try to count holomorphic curves like these to define, to define the augmentation. So kind of rigid things, d is equal zero like that. And then we try to prove the chain map equations. We have to look at one dimensional moduli space. But now there's a kind of huge difference between this, the previous Thing, and that's that what can happen is that some kind of boundary bubble starts forming and, and then splits off. This is somehow the relative version of what, what, what Helmut. These pictures live in what space? So this, whole, this, this boundary lives in LK and the whole disk lives in X. And now I have a, it's a one dimensional moduli space, so, so somehow I'm following. This, this is also in X with boundary on LK, this is in X with boundary on LK. So what I'm trying to explain is that there could be one parameter family that splits into a rigid disk from a <coughs> sorry a, a, a one-dimensional disk from above and a rigid disk formed on L just right. So this is somehow the obstruction. To the, the, so so that that would say that our previous nice thing that said that this chain map phi composed with D is zero. That's not true anymore. So it's, we kind of this is the, the bad, yes. LK is not exact. LK is not exact, right? That's exactly. And that's a, even the manifold not quite exact. But, but, but in particular, there could be such disks and they obstruct. And this here, unlike in Helmut's lecture, this is called dimension one phenomena. So it really matters. But now we somehow learn from Fukaya how to overcome this thing. So that's what the... Mohammed's talking about, so you, you have to find these bounding co-chains. And here, uh, of course, there is no bounding co-chain because what one would like to do, so here everything is rigid, so you don't, it's not so much higher moduli spaces you have to care about. But what, what, what is the scheme is that you would take this disk, uh, you take this disk and you try to find so, so here is your disk, and you try to find a chain bound, bound that, that its boundary bounds inside S1 times R3. But of course you cannot, because S1, S1 uh, has some homology. But you can do uh, almost the same thing. You can pull out its homology to infinity. So we, instead of finding bounding co-chains, we find sort of, I don't know what to call them, but they, we take for each such disk, uh, so for each rigid disk D, now sitting inside X with boundary on LK, uh, we take a chain which at infinity looks like some, uh, so, so this is a chain in, inside LK, right? So the boundary is an S1, it's a circle sitting inside LK, and we take a, a, a bounding co-chain, or bounding, bounding chain, I don't know whatever I say, co-chain, bounding chain, which begins on this guy and ends on k times x, some kind of, at infinity we have this nice longitude thing and, and at infinity this, this uh, cycle just looks like x and then straight down. So multiple, whatever multiple is, uh, is required by this. What is 
X, X is the longitude variable, so maybe I should call it xi or something. It's a specific way. And now, uh, how does this cure this problem? Well, it cures it in the way that when, when, you, when you, you, you can now somehow pass this thing by counting instead disks like this with insertions of, of, the, bounding of the bounding chains. So, so, so when, when you hit this thing, so here's your moduli space, you go into the boundary splitting, and then you have this bounding code chain, and you continue the, 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 you continue the family like this. So this is somehow this uh, whole idea of, no, maybe not whole, but this is, uh, this is Foucault and company's idea, right? And so in this way, you can now uh, avoid this interior splitting by at the cost of upgrading your disks to counting, not just these disks, d equals zero disks, but, but you need to count rather these disks, so it's hard to draw this beautiful picture, so I'm just drawing a schematically a line instead. Uh, so by counting disks with insertions of all these things, right? So now, what would the compactness theorem be? So we, we took out the bad part of the boundary. Well, the compactness theorem now would be that we, we, we have no interior splitting, so we have splittings only of the following sort. So this is one and this is zero, zero, zero. But, of course, we need to keep track of all the insertions. And there is no guarantee that our insertions live only in the compact part. They could certainly travel out to infinity. But at infinity, they're very easily counted. So if I have one of these disks, which now is disk in the differential, uh, out at infinity, my chains just looks exactly like this, right? So if I want to see how many times does this disk, how many insertions can I do, I just have to keep track of how many times does it intersect this standard curve, right? And if you think about it, so at infinity, the, the chains that come from these guys, it really looks now like, it really sort of looks like this, whatever it was, CKL e to the KX QL, right? It's just copies of this thing, one for each disk, so you have this. So, so in other words, counting these insertions is the same thing, because if I wrap K times around, I can, in, I go once here P, I can insert it K times, so, so it's exactly, setting p is equal to dw k dx, right? So if I want to count, if I, let's say I have just one curve here, it looks like e to the k x, and now I want, and I have another curve up here, which goes, if I, after I close it up, goes along this, this uh, circle. So how many, how many curves should I count? Well, I can insert this guy I can choose one of the k points, right? But I have k choices, right? So my count should be k times e to the kx. And therefore, you know, I have a couple of coefficients and so on, but the mechanism is exactly the same. So if I put p equal to the w of the kx, then this upper guy in the differential counts curves with these insertions. And the fact that now this, this matches, there's a proof of this uh, theorem. Right? Because from this, this picture, the proof is clear. Right? If I draw it with insertions, then indeed the, the chain map equation holds. And, uh, and ex, ex, you know, making this substitution is exactly uh, what we should do. So what did we gain in the end? So this, we said two, two different kinds of counts of holomorphic disks match with each other somehow. Well. For example, in the one and only example that we know, you can now count, if you know this kind of Lagrangian or down knot, you can now count, count curves on it, right? So, so we know somehow that this this is the polynomial. Now you can solve, solve for p in terms of x, and then integrate once, and you find the disk potential for this Lagrangian inside x, right? So, 
So, you, so by knowing the augmentation polynomial, which you can compute uh, by elimination theory, so for the trefoil, it's a more complicated thing. You can now count holomorphic disks uh, with boundary on this Lagrangian inside the X. How is Q vector in this type of The Q? Capital Q? Yeah, so it doesn't play a role. I mean, it just uh, keeps track on how many times it wraps around the, the central CP1. So it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with the boundary here, right? So it's just carried along. It's like a, so, so, so this W, this was W, right? And then DW, the thing that you want, that's just, Q is just, it's just K, C, K, L, E, K, X, Q, L. So it's just carried along. So from anything which you've said, it could be that the branch of the augmentation variety you get is always the stupid branch of the augmentation variety, like it's a straight line. No, it's not. It's not. So why is it not? Uh, I don't know. But, <laughs> no, but in the examples it is not. It's uh, not, uh, but, but, but in particular, they, right. They, in converse, if you want, want to actually know the disk potential, you have to know a priori which flange you're supposed to take. Yes, but so here you kind of, so, so this, this would be like calculating near p is equal zero, right? Then you know that you're supposed to take this. But there are many questions here. So in particular, in order to recover the whole, when it's irreducible, you're fine, right? If it, and that sometimes happens, but not always. When it's not, you somehow would like to find more Lagrangians, right? To, to, f to cover all of it in some sense. And I don't know how to do that. Um, so I realize I have no more time. But let me just maybe kind of say uh, four words and leave this to, for discussion. So, uh, so indeed, as <coughs> Jan was saying, so there is there's supposed to be a lift of this thing. So, so the that upgrades, so we have this augmentation polynomial that upgrades this to an operator equation with the same symbols, but where, where indeed this p, p now is equal to gs ddx in, in line with the, what I drew for the wave function. And, and this, what, what happens here, this thing should kill the this, this should be generator of the ideal corresponding to this Schrodinger equation, uh, or, the, or whatever it's called, D-module ideal. And then uh, what, what we are working on, and it's very much work in progress, is to actually see how to use SFT. So to do counterpart of this contact homology, but instead use, in some sense, all curves uh, up here, and count them and, and recover this, this relation. So, so that's, uh, and, and we managed somehow, it's an interesting story, I think it's far from finished, but I, it's looking good so we could, well, I'm not somehow trivial, but we managed to do for Hopflink and for Trefoil Note. So it, it looks kind of interesting and it certainly is, has a lot of challenging holomorphic curve problems, among them, um, uh, what's uh, this, uh, your business, obstruction bundle gluing, and also I would say some new phenomena where, where, you, uh, where you cross kind of multiple times and so on. So, so maybe, but, but uh, I think I'd better leave this to, to discussion and stop at this. Okay. Any questions? Um, I think that, so, the count of the object in the middle, where I think it's sort of like a hybrid of uh, augmentation and uh, bonding co-chain, which essentially make this unobstructed count and also linearize the count of the Yes, it's, that's right. That's exactly right. And you can, of course, this, uh, this trick uh, applies, uh, of course, fairly generally. I mean, now here is a very good case when all the curves are rigid, but if you want to go into applying this, you, you could, you see that when, when the homology, when you have uh, these Lagrangians with some infinity, and the homology of the Lagrangian generated from infinity, then you can always pull out cycles like this. They're kind of as good as bounding co-chains, and then you get similar type equations if, in the non-exact case, right? So, 
but but the, but the, the cycles that sit inside purely and, and bound holomorphic curve, they are behaving exactly like in this standard compact Lagrangian fluoromology story. But some of them you can get rid of by, by transporting to infinity. And, and what this, the, the, the lesson maybe is that this is a, it's actually kind of quite efficient way of computing. Uh, so, so I would say that compared to what's, so this uh, augmentation polynomial, maybe this, this one is a little bit difficult, but this guy is just, uh, as I said, it's just counted by, 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 by elimination theory from not something very concrete. So, so, so this calculation is comparatively very simple, whereas this uh, other computing directly inside is a kind of difficult task, I would say. Okay. So, so you mentioned the, the what do you call it, framing um, ambiguity at infinity. How does that yeah. enter into the... I'll tell you. So, uh, yeah, so, so of course I'm drawing pictures sufficiently fast that I'm kind of doing the opposite to helmet. Okay. So <laughs> it's doing so slow you can find some mistake, but if you draw really fast... <laughs> no. So, so I say, what, so the question is really what is this uh, going with the potential? So remember what we suppose, so, so we start from something and we realize we have to count, so it splits like that, so we would have to count you know, ins insertions of this bounding code chain for this guy here, right? But now, uh, of course, there, there could be some splitting which somehow splits. You, you cannot say when things split, right? So, so when you think about this, it could be that some of the insertions of some other guy actually ends up here, right? So, so the, the, the count of the, the disk potential, which I'm saying just count disks, does not quite just count disks if it's supposed to work with this formula, because it will have to count disks with this bounding code chain. So, so if I have one disk, and then I have already kind of some lower energy disks, I have to count that disk, so all, all possible trees of insertions of other disks in some sense, right? So, so actually the, the this gromov witten count is, uh, depends on the, somehow the choice of these binary code chains. And that's a little bit like, you know, if you frame the boundaries in some different way, you would get some different count, right? So that's a kind of, some kind of bounding, this framing ambiguity, I would say. Or, or you can maybe borrow the framing from a framing on, on the, on the solid torus, something like that. But, but admittedly, I, I, I mean, this is easy to see. I didn't work out kind of the details in any, any sense, but in, indeed, this is... I mean, the level of formulae, can you say how to compute the different... I mean, like physicists have predicted sort of what the dependency on the framing should be. Yeah, there, there are a couple of different framings. So, so one, one framing that they talk about is somehow just a choice of basis x compared to p. And, and, and basically, this, this guy should know everything. You can make a change of variables and compute things. But realizing it, again, is somehow that the preferred. So here, somehow, my feeling here kills the p variable. If you do something in some other frame, you preferably would like to kill the variable that you solve for in this potential formula. And a priori, we don't, I don't know how to get all suitable Lagrangians for that. But basically, this polynomial should know everything. That, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, I think. But then, to create the geometric setting for which it knows everything, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. How are you uh, buying yourself non commutativity from different higher genus curves? Yeah, so... Um, maybe, uh, maybe in discussion, it's not, it's, it's exactly... So, it's, it, so by doing this, but thinking about all the kind of higher genus curves that you could build by insertion as well. So see, if, if you, for example, if you have this, this disk and you want to insert this guy, so this builds you a disk. But now when you do higher genus, you, you have two connections, two insertions, you can choose both and so on. And you find that the count is just exactly what you get by taking this guy, acting on this guy. So. But uh, uh, maybe I can explain in discussion. 
So there's a kind of a curve count derivation of these. All right, so I yeah. took a 